Romans chapter 2 and verse 13 today. And I, I named the theme of the lesson the final authority. This verse is real important for us as believers. We can learn a lot in the verse. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Pray. Father, we're so thankful for your word. We just pray, Lord, for more knowledge and understanding. And we thank you for your grace and love to us. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Looking at that verse, 1 Thessalonians 2.13, you know, you think about the purpose of this. Will we allow the word of God to be our final authority? Will a believer allow that? When we say we, we're believers here at Clear Springs Bible Church. Will, will we allow the Word of God to be our final authority? Uh, but, uh, and when you do that, you believe the Word of God. You read the Word, you believe it, and you apply the doctrine and the details of your life. That goes right along with the grace life, living the grace life. We're saved by grace, we live by grace, and we understand the final authority is the Word of God. Now, you think about this, go back to Romans 10, 17, and we'll just read the verse. And while well, you turn to Romans 3.17, I'm sorry, 10.17, go ahead and get 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. And we'll read Romans 10.17 first. All right, in Romans 10.17, notice what it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, comma, and hearing by the Word of God. You know, if we're going to walk by faith, what does it take? You've got to hear the Word. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now then, 2 Thessalonians 1, 3. 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, Paul tells you something. He says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as is me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. No serious. Paul is, is thanking God uh, for them. Now, you go back to 1 Thessalonians 2.13, and notice what he says there. Again, he's thanking God. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. He says, For this cause, uh, also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God which you receive of us, you receive it not as the word of men. And I won't read the rest of the verse. So he's thanking God there when you receive the word of God which you receive of us. Now that's interesting when you read the verse and you understand what's in this verse. These believers, what did they do first? They accepted the word of God. They believed the word. They not allowed man to become their, their final authority. This is a church of Thessalonica. They were believers. So they allowed the Word of God to be their final authority and not allow men to be the final authority. And now you apply that today, that's to us, but you think about today, we're not allowing social media, we're not allowing man to be the final authority. That's an issue that we see out here today. And you know that as well. So many people allow and social media to be their final authority when they need to open the Bible up, rightly divide it and read it and believe it for themselves and believe what the Word says. So what Satan does, he wants to rob us from the final authority as believers. That's what he tries to do. And I'm going to give you an example of robbing us. Uh, would be We're going to use the Old Testament. We're going to go, it's all for our learning, so go to uh, Amos. Hosea, Joel, uh, Amos, Obadiah, you go over there to the Minor Prophets, you go to Amos chapter 8, and I'm going to give you a Bible example of what I'm trying to say about being robbed of the final authority. You all know about Israel. You know uh, their condition as time goes on. They go backwards. They fall away from the Word. They don't want any final authority. And that. So you'll find in Amos chapter 8, 
This is a result of Israel losing the final authority. In Amos chapter 8, look at verse 11. Romans 8, uh, Amos 8, 11. Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, but not a, not a thirst of what for water, but of hearing the, word, the words of the Lord. And that's going to be out there in that tribulation period. Uh, and we know that will take place. Look at verse 12. And they shall, notice that, wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Now that's going to be a bad condition for them out there in the future in that tribulation period. And you know, there's two big issues about the tribulation period. And we're, we're the body of Christ. We're going to be raptured out prior to that seven-year tribulation. God will deal with Israel in the tribulation period. There's two issues you need to remember that will take place about the Bible in the, word, in, in, in the tribulation period. Look, turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. Here's one of the issues. 2 Peter chapter 3. And look at verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 3. Well, look in verse 3. 2 Peter 3, 3. And notice what Peter says. Knowing this first, that there shall come in in the last days, this will be in the tribulation period, scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, well, what are the scoffers saying? And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Now that's the scoffers that come in. Uh, and you notice what they say there. Where is the, in verse 4, where is the promise of his coming? He's not come back yet. You know, the, the fathers, they've all died, fallen asleep. They're all, they're all gone. They're gone on. But now things continue as they were. Well, when's he coming back? So that, that's an issue will be out there in that tribulation period. Uh, where is the promise of his coming? And the second issue in that tribulation period, I read in Amos about the Word of God. Where is the <coughs> Word of God? What is the Bible? And you think about those issues right there that's going to happen in the tribulation period. And you think about for just a minute what's going on today. And you've got people saying, well, when is the Lord coming? You know, we know He's coming because Paul tells us that He's coming. We're to look for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know He's coming. But also in this time period we're living in, where people are saying, well, where is the Word? What, what Bible is the Word? You know that. There, there's people going through that same thing today. So we're in the but now time period. Out there in the ages coming, that tribulation period, they're going to go through the same thing. And, and, and you think about that. And Satan's behind all of that. And so, with that in mind, go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. And you think about what did these believers do in 1 Thessalonians 2 13. Well, let's read the verse again. In 1 Thessalonians 2 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, so first of all, they received the word. So that means they accepted the word of God as a final authority. And there's something else they did. You received it not as the word of men, as in truth the word of God, which affects the work of also in you that believe. But it says there, there in that verse, for this cause also we thank God without ceasing, because you received the word of God, which you heard of us. Well, what else did they receive? They received... The Paul's position as, as their apostle. They received that. They accepted Paul as their apostle, is what I'm trying to say. So, two things they received. First of all, they received the Word of God. It's a truth, not as a word of men. They did, the final authority is God's Word. The letter was given to them. They believed that. And also, they accepted Paul as their apostle. Well, what do we see today? We see people are, are not willing to accept the final authority. We see people that won't accept Paul as their apostle. 
So you see all of that today. Now you go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 there, and verse 6, about these believers at Thessalonica, how they received the word, they accepted the word of God, they accepted Paul as their apostle. Well, in 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, and ye became followers of us. See, there's proof that they, were, they accepted Paul as their apostle. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. I mean, they, they believed the word. They believed what God's word said. They believed that Jesus Christ died for the sin, was buried and raised again. They believe that Jesus Christ gave Paul the revelation of mystery to give, to give to them, to give to us. And what did they do? They followed Paul. And, and that's what they did in 1 Thessalonians 1, 6. So go back to 1 Thessalonians 2, 6, 2, 13. And, and again, the phrase there, you, uh, you received it not as a word of men, uh, but as it in truth the word of God, which effects and worketh also in you that believe. Well, you think about the word working in us. How it worked in those believers at Thessalonica. How it works in us. Now go back to chapter 1, 1 Thessalonians 1, 5. They received the word, the word worked in them. Now let's see how it worked in them. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Now read down verse 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Now you think about these the, these believers are they receive the gospel before they're saved they believe it and when they believe the gospel they, verse 9 there talks about how they turn from turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God well after they're saved what did they do wait for his son from heaven that's what we're doing we're waiting for his son from heaven to come for us they heard the gospel they believe the gospel the gospel went to work in their life that's my point behind it all it It'll work in you that believe. Now turn back to Philippians 2.13. Philippians 2.13. This verse here, it's overlooked by so many believers today. And they don't know how God works today in a believer. How God works in a believer. Let me put it that way. And that's the way, look at Philippians 2.13. Philippians 2.13, for it is God which worketh in you both the will and the do of his good pleasure. Who, how does he work in us? Well, he does it through his word. We know that, and we understand that. And by him working in us through his word, as we take the word in, God works in us. He can't work in us if we don't put the word in us. You've got to put it in. We'll look here in first, back at 1 Thessalonians 2.13. 2.13 again, he uses the word effectually, and we've gone over that quite a bit. Effectually, and you think about it, it comes inside of you. The Word does. It works When it comes inside of you, it, it works in you, then it works out. But you've got to be willing, you've got to will, be willing to take it in, your mind, spirit, take it in, put it in your soul, your mind, let the Word work in you, then it works out. That, that's how it does. And... The, the question would be, what activates the Word? You know, you've always hear people activating a fire or whatever. What, act, what activates the Word in us? Well, look at 1 Thessalonians 2.13 there. Notice what it says uh, in the last part of that verse, which effects the work with also in you that believe. Whenever you believe what you read, rightly and divided, that will activate the Word to work in you. But until you do that, it's not going to activate the Word. You know, you can read all you want to and spend all your life in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's doctrine. It's for our learning. But you're not activating the Word to work in you because you're not learning what's to you 
until you go to Romans through Philemon. So that's what activates the word. That's an example. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Some of you may have never had any trouble in Ephesians chapter 1 for understanding it. But once you see this, that you've got to go backwards on the, on the first part of this to understand the last part as well, when you look at it, it, it helps you. Ephesians 1.13, in whom we know that's Christ. You also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also that also after that you believe, come. So you, if you stop right there, you've got to understand something. You've got to have the gospel. You've got to hear it before you can believe it. And you believed it. And then after you believed it, what happens to you? You're sealed with that Holy Spirit promise. So that, that's what we have. And that's, that's justification when you're saved. When you believe the gospel, you're justified. You're declared righteous. And, you know, when do you begin to grow? That'd be another question. After you've heard the gospel, I heard the gospel in, in, in Germany in 1970 in January. Well, when, when did I begin to grow? I didn't, I didn't grow. Well, I'll give you this before I say what I was fixing to. Go to Colossians chapter 2. When do you begin to grow? Colossians chapter 2, and look at verse 6. In Colossians chapter 2, I'm going to look in verse 6. And just ask yourself, when did you begin to grow after you, after you believe the gospel? When you believe the gospel, that means you believe that Christ died for your sins and that he was buried and he was raised again. You believe that? That's justification. You're declared righteous. Well, when, when did you begin to grow after that? Colossians 2, 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Notice that, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus as the Lord common, so we believe the gospel, we received him, and then he says, so walk ye in him. Well, how are you going to walk in him? It's a walk of what? Faith. That's what it is. Well, how do you get faith? We read it, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So what do you do with the word of God? You rightly divide the word of God. If you don't rightly divide it, you're not walking by faith. So, and if you're not walking by faith, then you're not growing. So, that's why I'm saying, you know, when, when did we start growing? And how, how are you going to walk in it? That's when you start growing. And so, notice now in Colossians chapter 2, something else, verse 7. Rooted and built up in it, and established in the faith. You know, when you're established, that's a per you're permanent, that's a permanent process. Established in the faith. As you have been what? Taught. Well, let me ask you, who taught you? Apostle Paul. So what's that mean? You know, if Paul doesn't teach you, then that means you're not walking, it's not a walk of faith. You're walking with sight. It also teaches you you're not growing, you're not learning, and Paul hasn't taught you. I mean, it, that's, that's that simple. Who taught you? First of all, the Holy Spirit taught you. Well, how did he teach us? By Paul's letter, Romans 2, 5, 8. That's how he taught us. And, he, and, and the word rightly divided. So that, that's how we're taught. That's how the Holy Spirit teaches us. So now I'll go back to Romans chapter 1. We're talking about the final authority. We're talking about living the grace life. That's what we're really talking about. And you think about Romans chapter 1. And look at verses 11 and 12. You know, we, we're, as we walk our life, we understand there's a process in our life. And sometimes we have a tendency to make the wrong turn in life and we don't continue that process like we should, walking the walk of faith. And it doesn't take much to get us detoured off of what we should be doing. So kind of get that in your mind. 
It's a walk of faith, living the grace life. And you look at Romans 1.11, For I long to see you, talking about the church at Rome, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts. A gift. That's a doctrine. Uh, to the end you may be established. And you know, to the end there, no set, there to, to be established. There's a process getting things and, and coming to a permanent establishment. Being stable is what I'm trying to say. Notice verse 12. That is, that I may be comforted together with you. How? By the mutual faith both of you and me. Well, what does that mean? The mutual faith. you got to know the same thing Paul knows. That's mutual. Those believers in Rome, he's telling them there. Uh, that, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. I mean, speak the same thing. You've got the doctrine in you. What the Apostle Paul, the doctrine he gave them, they got to speak the same thing. So they all, they're all in agreement. Uh, well, where do we find that doctrine at? And we know that answer here. We find it in Romans 2, 5, 11 today. That's where we find it. So, you look at Romans chapter 6 and look at verse 17. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. Romans 6, 17. But God be thanked that ye were, notice that past tense, ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Uh, delivered you. Notice that, what was the form of doctrine delivered to them? They, they saw the doctrine given them, the doctrine of grace, and they saw, they saw their new identity in Christ. Once you're saved, you've got a new identity. You're justified. You understand that. You don't have to worry about whether you lose your salvation. It's not yours. It's a gift given to us. And that, that new identity, you look at Romans 6, 3 and 4 there, verse 3, Romans 6, 3, you know you not that so many of us as were baptized in Jesus Christ, were baptized into his, into his death. Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death, into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. We got a new identity. So, and you, you think about that. We, and not all that. You think about Romans 5, 1 there. It starts out Romans 5, 1. It's interesting to see this. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God. Is God angry at us today as believers? No. We've got peace with Him. The world doesn't have peace. But we've got peace with Him. So, you think about that. And you think about, we, we can have a life that can bear fruit. Maybe be a fruitful life as we walk. But here's something, and we read this verse last week, but I need to repeat it to you. First uh, Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. When you think about the final authority, you think about the grace line, you think about our walk, how we receive the Word of God, we believe the gospel, we were saved, how that we're walking by faith. How do we understand? So then faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God, rightly divided, and we make progress in our life. <clears throat> Just think about it that way. And, and you've got to do this. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to the doctrine. And I want to emphasize this again. First thing there is, till I come, give attendance to reading. You may not have this problem, but I, I, I do at times, and I have to watch myself. Whenever I read, I don't try to run references. I don't try to figure out sermons. I've been guilty of doing that, but you read, you ought to read, and not have anything else on your mind, and not trying to look up words and all that. Uh, just read, give attendance. Difference in reading and studying. And when you read, You'll notice there in verse 16, 1 Timothy 4, 16, Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this I shall both save thyself and them that fear, hear thee. Now that's not 
justification, save thyself. We went over that last week. That's referring back to 1 Timothy there in verse 1 about the uh, people departing from the faith. We won't spend a lot of time with that, but you can look it up for yourself there. So you think about uh, being the Word of God taken in, but I want to emphasize that to you enough. Don't get sidetracked on reading. Read, just read and read. And after you get to finish reading, then spend time running references, spend time studying, but read. And don't let things interrupt you from your reading. Now I've been guilty, and I'm not going to ask you if you have, because I know you have. So we're, we're guilty at that, and I believe it will help you. I mean, you think about the Word of God when you, the Word when you read, and you put study the Word, you learn the doctrine. Well, what does that do for us? Ephesians 3.16. We know the verse, Ephesians 3.16. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Do we, I'm going to ask a question before I read it. Do we all need internal strength? And we all do. We need strength. We don't want to be weak in our walk. But we want to be strong in the faith. Stand fast in the liberty where, where Christ has made us free. Ephesians 3.16 That He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. How are we strengthened? In our inner man. The Word comes in. You take the Word in. The Holy Spirit teaches you. You take the Word in you're strengthened. And when you're strengthened, and look at Ephesians 4.15 Ephesians 4.15 But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is ahead even the, even Christ. Notice that grow up into him in all things. My desire is not to be a babe. My desire is not to be carnal walking after the flesh. My desire is to take in the word rightly divided. Walk by faith not by sight. Don't get detoured away. Don't have to, and all that. But just stay focused and, and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And doing the work of the ministry. And grow. Grow up in it. That's, that's my desire. And you know, Paul tells you something about all this. Turn back to Romans 12, 1. I have to repeat things because repetition, you need it. And I need it. We need it very badly in our lives. Romans 12.1. This is part of the grace life living. Romans 12.1. You see, I, it says in Romans 12.1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Come. Now let me ask you, when you present your body as a living sacrifice, you've got a spirit and soul inside of your body. Well, that's an act there of your free will. That's volition when you present your body. You've got a choice to make. You can present your body or you can not present your body. But what does the Word say? Present your body as a living sacrifice. That's your choice. That's my choice. And that's an act of our free will. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's what I want you to see there. It's an act of your will. You make that choice yourself. Nobody can make it for you. That's like, you know, you had you raised your children growing up and you give them the choice. They've got a, it's a choice for them to do. It's an act of their will. Well, and you think about Romans 12 too, the same thing, and be not conformed to this world. I mean, it, it tells you that. Don't be conformed to it. But be ye transformed well, how am I going to be transformed or changed from the world? By the renewing of your mind. Well, how do you renew your mind in the Word of God? That's how you do it. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's a process there. Good, acceptable, and perfect. And, you know, when you're renewed in the spirit of your mind, go back to Ephesians 4 for just a second. Ephesians chapter 4, and look at verse 23. This chapter here is, Talk about your walk. Ephesians chapter 4. If you read verse 1, Ephesians 4, 1, 
I therefore the prayers of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation with your call. So the chapter is talking about your walk. You're saved. He's writing to the Ephesians there, and he's dealing with, with, with their walk there. And you'll notice in, in Ephesians 4.23 that you that and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's Romans 12, 2. And you think about it, you've got to take the word in. You've got to believe the Word of God is the final authority. Take the final authority in. Believe it. Read it. Put it in your inner man. Let it work in you. Then what do you do? Well, Ephesians 4 there, look in verse uh, 22. Once you take the Word in and it works in you, then what do you do? That you put off concerning the former conversation. You put some things off. The old man, which is corrupt according to sinful lust. Then what do you do? After you put it off, verse 24, and then you put on the new man, which after God has created righteousness and true holiness, wherefore putting away lying. You know, after you're putting this off, you're getting rid of the lying, speak to every man truth with his neighbor, for we're members of one of another. You know, people say they're saved, but yet they can lie with the best of them. Well, what's wrong with them? Well, then if they're saved, now I'm not, I can't tell you if they're saved or not, but if they're saved, then I know one thing, is a fact. The Word of God, the final authority says, they've not put away lying. They've got it. They've not they refused to get rid of lying. So the question is, can a, can a believer lie? I'm well, just sure as I'm standing here we can lie. So, you know, we're guilty. It's not that, can a preacher lie? A preacher can lie. You know, they're not perfect like some people want to think they might be. So Paul says, wherefore put away lying. Speak every man true with his neighbor for a member of one of another there. I mean, you put off and you put on. And you're going to do that if you put the doctrine in you. you. It's your choice. It's your choice of your will. And that's why you've got in Ephesians 5.18 all the way to Ephesians 6.9, and we're not going to go through that, but Ephesians 5.18 says, And be not drunk with wine, for it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You remember how what the Word of God says about how you feel the Spirit? Colossians 3.16, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. You ought to have that verse beside of that. You put the Word in you. Well, how do you, how do you let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly? You read it. You spend time reading. But after that, you spend time, if you want to run references, you run references. After that, you spend time studying. And I'm just giving you uh, these things here. But you do that. Uh, you know, and that brings up this question. Do we ever have issues that come up in our life? Nearly every day. Nearly, I mean, if you get it, if you breathe, you're going to have issues because they're out there. What happens when things come up in our lives? Well, what becomes our final authority? That's what you got to ask yourself. What's going to be your final authority with issues in your life? And you know, it could be a minor issue or it could be a serious issue, but it's an issue. Well, what are you going to do? Well, you've got to have some final authority. You've got to have something to go to and say, so here it is, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, so you find verses in the Bible. Now we've used this verse one way as to believe it, but look at Romans chapter 12. <coughs> what if you have, the question would be, what if you have today a, 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 an issue with an unbeliever? Have you ever had an issue with an unbeliever? And you know you have. I have too. Well, the question always comes up, though. Well, what? Well, what about issues with the brethren? Well, we have we've had that too. Everybody has, but we're going to deal with unbelievers with this right now. Romans twelve nineteen. Notice it says, "Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine; I will repay, saith the Lord." Now you have somebody, whether it's a neighbor. Or, or whoever, whomever it might be, and they've done something to you that's not right. It may have hurt you, and it may have hindered you, and bothered you in, in, in different ways. Well, what are you going to do? They're unbelievers, as far as you know. Well, how are you going to handle that? Well, Romans 12, 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not ourselves, yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For his written vengeance is mine, I will pray, saith the Lord. Well, let me ask you a question on a lost person. They're, they're headed for the wrath of God. 
And that wrath's going to end up, they're going to end up in the lake of fire. So what we have to do is get past our emotions and how we feel and how we're hurt and, and, and the, the trip we're on emotionally and understand and look at the, the matter is we don't avenge ourselves. And the Lord's going to repay. But what we're going to do is give that person an opportunity to hear the gospel. We're going to give the gospel to them. No matter how bad they've been to you, it doesn't matter if they've, whether they've spoken to you for 20 years or not, we still need to give the gospel to them. And you know as well as I do, that's a hard thing for us because pride is in our, gets in our way. Emotions stand in our way. And we, we reminisce in our mind what that person's done to us. And instead of realizing Romans 12, 19, who's going to repay? The Lord is. If they, if they die lost, they're, they're under the wrath of God. They end up in the lake of fire. We, we don't want that. Even have a lot. We don't want it for anybody. And we want to see the lost saved. Same way with believers. I mean, you can use it that way about believers. So go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And look at verse 12. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12. In verse 12, Paul says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace, no said among yourselves. Talking to the church of Thessalonica. That's the church family. Be at peace among yourselves. That, that's a wonderful thing there. The local church is a place to come and fellowship and be at peace. And be refreshed like we have been today here. Uh, the local church should put all this doctrine in, into action. Romans 2, 5, 8. You know what the world... You think about the world. The world, most people don't know what kindness is. You think about that. They don't know what it is. And when I say that, one example would be most people in the world don't know what it is to hold the door open for another person. I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying most people. Well, most people don't know what it is to let a car pull out in front of them letting them in. I'm crowded. I'm moving up. They're not coming in. Then, then they come in they don't even give you a thank you. Wave their hand. And then we get mad because of that. We're never, I'm not never going to do that again. And you know this attitude and, and, and we don't need to be like that. And you think about the assembly. You think about the Word of God. Let me give you something very interesting about the Word of God. Turn to Hebrews 4. I know we've, we've saw some things in this verse, but I want to give you something else. Hebrews chapter 4. And look at verse 12. This is about the Word of God. We're talking about the final authority. We're talking about how should we live as believers? By faith. How do we get faith? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. So it takes the Word of God rightly divided for us to walk by faith. So here's what the Word does. This, is, this here is an example for us, for our learning, and we can see here what the Word does. Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is quick, and we're going to look at that in just a second. It's quick, and notice that there, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And you know, you think about the, for the Word of God is quick. That's the written Word of God. That's what we have in our hands. That's what I'm reading out of, preaching out of. When it's quick, it means the Word of God is fast. F-A-S-T. It's fast. And what, what's that mean to us? Well, the Word of God, when you take it in, if it's quick, if it's fast, when you take it in, the Word of God rightly divided, Romans 2, 5, Lehman, you take it in, and it works in you. It's fast to work in you. And it also will work out of you. But the issue is to take it in. 
And that, you know, you think about people and you often wonder, why do people never get it? Why do they ever learn how to rightly divide and apply the doctrine and details of life? Well, here's a verse from T. The Word of God works fast, quick. It's quick. Well, what are people not doing if, 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 you, if they're not showing an in, indication in their life that they're not applying the doctrine? They're not getting it. They don't understand it. They're not putting the Word in. That's simple. You don't. The Word's judged. All you're doing is discerning. You know. You've got to take the Word in. When you see believers detour and go away from the doctrine, what's the problem? They've not taken the Word in like they should. They've not allowed the Word to, word to work quick in them to change their lives. And it may be, why is that? They may not want to change. I don't, you know, I don't know what would be the reason. So, I do know this, that Satan attacks the Word of God. And all you've got to do is go back to Genesis 3 and see that. And we won't go back there, but I will say this, Satan will get man to question the Word. That's what he wants you to do. Question of the authority. He wants you to add to the Word of God. He wants you to take away from it. Something you don't like, take it out. That's what Satan wants you to do. That's what we see today. He wants you to water it down. Oh, it's really not that bad. Like for example, will a lost person, if he dies lost, will he go to eternal hell? And the answer is yes. Will he end up in the lake of fire? The answer is yes. But Satan wants you to water that down. Oh, it's really not that bad. And that's right, what Satan wants to do. Satan also wants you to deny the word. And, and, and he wants you to do that. So you think about the final authority. You think about what was the Lord Jesus Christ's attitude about the Word of God. And I'll give you this quickly. Uh, turn to Matthew chapter 4 and 2 Timothy chapter 3. Get 2 Timothy 3.16 and Matthew chapter 4. We're talking about what was the Lord Jesus Christ's attitude about the Word. And we can use more, but time's not going to allow us. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4, 4. What was Jesus Christ's attitude towards the Word of God? Matthew 4, 4. And this is what he told Satan to be intended. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, every word out of the mouth, that's inspiration. How do we know that? Look at 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Breathed out. Notice that. And of God. And is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Notice that. Breathed out. Inspiration. One more. Psalm 33 and verse 6. Psalm 33 6. Psalm 33 6. This is a good verse to tie in to Matthew 4 4, 2 Timothy 3 16. Matthew 33 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Notice that. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth is breathed out. Notice that. The, the breath of his mouth. There's inspiration that was breathed out. You know, you, we're free in Christ. Stand fast in the liberty. And turn to John 8, 32. John 8, 32. I'll give you this one. And we're, we're done. John 8, 32. You think about we're free in Christ. We stand fast in that liberty. In John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That, you can apply that today. I mean, we're, we're, the truth's going to make you free. So I can tell you this, that's what the grace life is. It's a life that we're free. We've got living in Christ Jesus. We can stand fast. We're walking by faith, not by sight. We're taking the Word of God in. We're letting it work in us, working out, and uh, we're making progress in our life as a believer. The final authority will do that.